या बंटी बंसाली से निकने में मैन शुभंकर ओके मेक इट फुल स्क्रीन मा यस सर सरकार उचित और सम्यक प्रक्रिया के माध्यम से उच्च न्यायपालिका के खाली पदों को भरने के लिए प्रतिबद्ध बंटी गो है मेक इट फुल स्क्रीन मा Yes, sir. Sir, uh, full screen done, sir. Am I, uh, sir, the uh, whether yes, the people yes, visible? Okay, run through the slides. Okay, show करने क्या फायदा है ये सब से तो मालूम है और ऐसे show करना जैसे कि बाप रे इतनी busy है. Sir, I'll join one minute late, okay? Uh, two minutes. Fine, sir. Fine, sir. Fine. I'm uh, logged in, but uh, I'm. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll join one minute, two minutes late. Thank you. Bye, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Sorry, I am just delayed by a minute or no two. No problem, sir. No problem, sir. No problem. We are just checking the slides, sir. You take a minute yeah, to yeah. comment, sir. No problem. You all start. I'll hear the history. No problem. Thank you. Yes, sir. Doctor Professor Rachna, ma'am, are you with us? Okay. And I will uh, just for information, Doctor Sinwas Pai did this MBBS, MS, and a uh, uh, few years From of Kasturba experience College. in Manipal. And, and uh, uh, later he spent time in Kidwai Oncology also. It looks. Sir. And uh, we are proud to say now he is head of the department of. Uh, he is your student, sir. Yes, yes, yes. I am. Oh, very proud. I know him. Sir. I know, sir, since childhood actually. <laughs> oh, before even coming to the medical school, right, sir? Ah, very yeah. nice. To come from the same place, sir, same um, native place. I think our parents were friends. Oh. <laughs> Somshekar yes, sir, sir, good evening sir. Hi, good evening, Professor Kamal sir. Hi, hi, hi sir, Rajkopal sir. sir, good evening. Sir, Namaskara, sir. Very Namaskara, nice. Sir. Uh, some video issue is there, so I joined by the mobile. So nice to see you, and you are hundreds of books behind you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All personally authored, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jalal sir, good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening, sir. Good. 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 Today, today there is a very, very eminent galaxy. So nice yes, to sir. see you. Yes, uh, very auspicious and special World ah. Cancer Day special. Uh, okay, I think eight o'clock we will start the session with the permission of the faculty. I think Rachna Ma'am will be shortly joining. She said she is on call. So I warmly welcome today's faculty, uh, Professor uh, Somshekar Sir. He is the chairman of the Manipal Cancer Hospital from Bangalore. and uh, he is a most eminent uh, surgical oncologist and he is a specialist in uh, peritoneal surgery and he represents india to the globe he is part of the uh, world council member of the peritoneal cap and his program on dnb drnb in surgical oncology is very much respected across the country and uh, he also is doing the regular teaching program for the iaso group for the surgical oncology residents i would recommend all the students to be part of it a tad little higher standard but they definitely touch upon all eminent topics it's not limited to only clinical topics they do trial presentations they do tandem talks they do debates also apart from that regular case presentations also happen so i'm sure uh, those who need those uh, links you please keep or reach to me because om shekhar sir regularly shares the program to me so i can share to you those who are interested can be part of it thank you dr som shekhar uh, this is uh, more than five times you have joined us and uh, we apologize if we are going to bug you very often to join our classes i can't say no to you sir pleasure and honor is mine thank you <laughs> thank you very much sir then shinwas pai sir in fact uh, he has been already with us and uh, i in fact when i requested him he immediately volunteered to say yes and uh, we have rachna ma'am rachna ma'am is from uh, reva reva is in up uh, madam today is her admission day so he said uh, she said she'll be joining us shortly and i thank uh, dr hemant kumar notial sir and uh, dr sangamani uh, sir uh, hemant kumar sir is from uh, hims uh, jolly grand and uh, we have tangamani sir from institute of general surgery from ras medical college 
I thank their respective HODs for permitting their students. And I also thank our uh, academic committee members. In fact, uh, Harida sir volunteered to be uh, part of us for all the classes. Thank you and welcome Harida sir for uh, joining into the main team. And uh, we have uh, Kanna sir, Raj Gopal sir, Jailal sir, Shinva sir, and uh, uh, Karnakaran sir who have been regularly helping us. And, uh, I wish uh, both the PGs good luck. Let us have Shivankar here first and then uh, Pavitran second. So, Shivankar, uh, I think you need to go for the duty by 9 o'clock. That's what Heyman sir told yes, me. So, you start your presentation first. Yes, sir. right, sir. Good evening, everyone. I Shivankar Agarwal, a third year resident of surgery in HIMS, and going to present a case uh, uh, of carcinoma buccal mucosa. Uh, uh, Starting, Are you with okay, the, ma? starting with the case, uh, I'm going to present a 51-year-old uh, case of a 51-year-old gentleman, chronic tobacco chewer, uh, uses uh, chews quit uh, residents of uh, Dehradun, uh, uh, the part of northern India, shopkeeper by occupation belonging to upper middle class, who presented to us in the surgical OPD with uh, chief complaints of ulcer in the left side of the oral cavity since four months. Uh, with the history of presenting illness, uh, patient was apparently well four months back when he noticed an ulcer. Yeah, in the uh, left side. One minute, uh, you know, you use the term chronic tobacco chewer. What do you mean by chronic, acute, acute and chronic? What did you mean? Why didn't you just say he consumes tobacco? You wrote chronic. What does that mean? What is the definition of chronic tobacco chewer? Uh, sir, uh, taking uh, uh, tobacco for uh, more than six months, would be included in uh, continuous uh, tobacco. Uh, Which definition is that six months is chronic, two months is acute, three months is acute and chronic? Sorry, sir. Okay. Another term is you say that patient is an alcoholic, patient takes alcohol, patient right, is sir. a smoker, right? So, uh, uh, WHO defines a person who is <laughs> chronic or tobacco chewer as a person who consumes tobacco regularly more than two years without taking the regular dose of tobacco in any form, he develops withdrawal symptoms. So don't use the term chronic tobacco chewer alcohol because unless you know the definition you made, the best way as a student is patient gives history of non-spoke oral tobacco chewing from for over past four years, four times a day, you know, so define that, that's very clear. Otherwise, unless we follow, because exam is a point where you need to go smoothly. Examiners are waiting to sort of, you know, stop you. Interruption during history is not good for you. So always remember, also alcoholic, smoker don't use that. Patient gives history of smoking cigarettes or BD, chutta for last seven years, on and off, intermittently or continuously, two packs a day. So define it and define, that's beautiful, okay? Yeah, right. that's it. Thank you. Uh, starting with the history of presenting illness, patient was apparently well four months back when he noticed an ulcer in the left side of the oral cavity, which was initially approximate one centimeter in size, which uh, progressed to approximately Dr. Shubankar, Dr. Shubankar, you are on a previous slide. Go to the on screen, the slide is not there. Right, sir. Uh, so is it visible now? Yes, yes. Uh, patient was apparently back. Noticed an ulcer in the left side of the oral cavity, which was initially approximate one centimeter in size, which progressed to the approximate size of two centimeter, as told by the patient over the period of four months. It was associated with pain on touch. It was associated with pain on touch and increased sensitivity to spices over that region. There was also history of pain in the left molar tooth, which was insidious in onset, continuous, progressive, dull aching, and was relieved partially on taking analgesics. There was also history of loosening of the third molar tooth from past five months and spontaneous loss of second molar tooth. There was no history of pain. One more. Somebody has a disturbance. If somebody has logged it twice, can you, can you just unmute it? Or maybe except the presenter and the examiners. Ah, yeah, thank you. Everybody can mute. Okay. Uh, 
Shubankar, you told pain. Is there any relevance of a ulcer and pain? I'll give an example. There is a painless ulcer. What comes to your mind? Ulcer with pain. What comes to your mind? Uh, painful ulcer. The uh, painful ulcer can be due to any disease. There is a lot of disturbance. Uh, you know, I don't know from which side it is. Coming. Voice clear now. The voice is still there. Subankar, you can just try your. Uh, uh, the connection is okay, sir, uh, but there is disturbance. Continuous disturbance. Okay, sir. Oh. Yes, okay, sir. Clear. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, with the pain, uh, we can differentiate some uh, points with painful and painless ulcer. Sir, uh, in, if the ulcer is painful, it might be uh, due to some infective pathology. It can be due to uh, trauma, like uh, due to sharp teeth or uh, any dentures which have been fitted into, uh, in the oral cavity. Or uh, it can be due to uh, presence of uh, herpetic ulcers, or uh, it it can be due to uh, the painless ulcers can be due to other conditions uh, uh, like malignant ulcers, or uh, if it is in a in syphilis, the uh, there is formation of chancre. These are also painless. Okay, please go ahead. Thanks, sir. So uh, then there was no history of fever, bleeding, or pus discharge from the lesion. There was no history of trauma to the site. There was no history of any dental intervention or any presence of sharp tooth as uh, told by the patient. There was no history of any uh, swelling in the neck. There was no history of loss of appetite or significant weight loss. There was no history of any uh, high risk behavior, exposure to any prior radiation in past or uh, any ENT related problems. There was no history of distant metastasis like chest pain, cuff, hemopsis, Abdominal distension beyond this. You told no, no, no uh, earache or ENT related ache. Yes, what sir. is the relevance of earache in the oral pumus? Uh, sir, uh, differentiating, uh, differentiating a malignant oh, yes. ulcer or uh, with other infective pathologies of uh, ENT related problems. Sir. Okay. Uh, the, the, the way pain is referred into that place of the ear, can you distinguish the primary site of location? Sorry, sir. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, the site of the ear, the pain is referred. Can you distinguish the site of oral cavity where the problem of primary pathology is? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, if there is uh, an earache, uh, sometimes the uh, primary is uh, over the uh, tongue, sir, which leads to, uh, which leads to earache, severe earache. Okay, I will give an example. If the patient says, I have a pain in front of the draggers, yes, or below the tragus, or behind the ear pin on the mastoid area, or deep inside the canal. So, what type of ear pain? Does it show where the primary tumor could be in the oral cavity? 
Tumma Shalini, you may have to mute. There is a lot of disturbance from your side. Can you please mute? No, I spoke only for you. Okay, uh, now it's now everybody is muted. Can you please uh, address this issue? The referred pain in front of the tragus, below the ear lobule, behind the pinna on the mastoid or deep in the ring. Where will be the primary? Uh, sir, uh, sir, depending upon the uh, site of the ear, uh, we can uh, sometimes localize the uh, primary site. Uh, if uh, it is uh, if it is at uh, just anterior uh, anterior to the uh, in, inside the uh, meatus then uh, uh, extra meatus then uh, it is usually uh, the primary site is uh, in, on the tongue then uh, uh, then uh, if it is uh, over the uh, uh, sir then uh, if it is over the uh, if it is over the uh, pinna region, then uh, then uh, the primary then the primary side uh, the nerve involved is uh, uh, greater auricular nerve uh, and uh, it radiates uh, uh, due to the primary site of uh, uh, in the buccal mucosa, sir. The inner part of the ear canal is supplied by the vagal branch which is a base tongue posterior lesion and the pharynx. Okay. In front of the ear, in front of tragus is corded tympani along with lingual branch of trigeminal anterior two third of the tongue. Okay. Posteriorly, it is a combination of glossopharyngeal and vagus, which is a posterior one third tongue. Okay. These are the referred. Okay. Go ahead. Uh Then coming to past history, uh, patient is a known hypertensive since four years. He takes irregular medication, which is not known by the patient uh, at present. There was no history of uh, diabetes, tuberculosis, or any other chronic illness or any drug allergy. There was no history of surgery in the past. I just but have one question. Uh, can, I, can I interrupt? Can I interrupt? Yes, sir. I have a question. Why you ask for history of jaundice? Sir, uh, patient, uh, patient with oral cavity cancers may have distant metastasis to uh, lung, liver, uh, bone. Sir. It may lead to jaundice, sir. Okay. See, uh, Shankar, this is called digging your own grave. What is the commonest cause of death in oral cancer in the terminal phase? Tell me. What is the commonest ca ca cause of death in cancer in gastric cancers? colorectal cancer, lung cancer, their systemic metastasis, oral cancer, what is the usual cause of death? Yes, sir. What is the usual cause of death in oral cancer? Um, I'll give an example. What is the commonest yes. cause of death in penile cancer? Okay. We'll not waste the time. I'll tell you. The chance of systemic metastasis in oral squamous cell carcinoma is extremely low. 99% of the people yes, never die of systemic metastasis. The chance of lung metastasis is less than 4% in oral cancer. The commonest site of metastasis is lymph node, local regional recurrence, recurrent blowout of the carotid, 
and death. So, systemic metastasis is not common in oral cancer. It is less than 4%. That is one of the reasons in metastatic survey, we don't do PET scan or CT scan of the lung. Okay. There are few cancers in the body which right. respect Halstead in principle, primary, local, regional, systemic. Only all, no, none of the cancer follow Halstead in principle. They follow Fisher hypothesis. Those cancers are squamous cell carcinoma, oral cavity, penile cancer. They will never be systemic metastasis in absence of node metastasis. These are the only two cancer which respects. So local regional disease is the commonest cause. Systemic metastasis is not. The only head and neck site other than lymphoma, nasopharyngeal carcinoma where systemic metastasis can happen is post cricoid region or cricopharynx where it is 20%. Okay, so don't say that. So jaundice, that is why sir asked you that question. See, my, my uh, take is history should be relevant, right. not, comp not everything in the book. Right. It should not be an approach, everything given under the sun you ask. You should have every finding, every uh, history you take, you should be able to explain why. If you are able to explain giving a scientific answer why, we will accept. Your answer is not scientific. Therefore, not relevant to status. Understood? Thank you. Okay, sir. One, one, can I add one point at this point? Actually, very good points raised. Uh, John is in a case of a metastatic liver also. Even if it is a, very rightly said by Dr. Somersheger, it will never metastasize liver. Even in colorectal malignancy, if it metastasizes liver, how often you find John is in a metastatic liver? Okay. Very rare, unless the liver is completely knocked out by the liver metastasis, or there should be something obstructing the bile duct nodes or something, you know, rarely. Otherwise, you don't get John. To correctly said, do, whatever given in the books, like pilar, cyanosis, clubbing, cyanosis, clubbing, and very commonly described things in general examination and examination also, need not say in the history, some parts in the history we should avoid. Many things are not very relevant. Okay. Right. Go on, go on, go on. Uh, coming to personal history, patient takes mixed diet, has normal bladder and bowel habits, has a normal sleep pattern. There was history of tobacco chewing, uh, takes quit for last 10 to 12 years, uh, 6 to 8 packets a day. <clears throat> there was history of occasional alcohol intake, 1 to 2 times per month, uh, approximately uh, 40 ml uh, on, each, okay, uh, on each time. <clears throat> coming to family history. Uh, patient is married. Uh, uh, Subankar, yes. whenever a oral cancer you are presenting, very important to say smokeless, smoke. So non-smokeless tobacco. Is it a quid? Is it a tobacco? Is it a gutka? Is it a powder? Does he mix with, uh, you know, squid and keep? Where does he keep it? Does Thank he you. have a habit of keeping in the GB sulca sleep overnight and come morning? Or just chew and swallow? Or does he keep in RMT? This is extremely important. What, right. what do we call as Indian oral cancer? Do you know what do you mean by Indian oral cancer? Sir, uh, gingivo buccal sulcus, sir. sir the patient. Patient. So yes. habit is very important. Some people just keep it to act as a reservoir over many hours. They develop submucous fibrosis, GB sulcus tumor. Some people chew and swallow. Then for right. them, hypopharynx, base tongue, lung, uh, cervical esophagus is common. So you have to elaborate the tissue. That's most important in this. Right. Then uh, starting with the uh, examination part, the patient is conscious, well-oriented to time, place and person. Okay. Is there any significant systemic examination in your in this patient? Sir, uh, sir respiratory, ex uh, respiratory system is an uh, impor important system to examine, sir. No, no, in this patient, uh, apart general physical examination, any relevant findings? Sir, there is a cervical lymphadenopathy, sir, in general physical examination. It is still local regional for a oral cancer. That is not a part of general in the oral cancer. It is a local regional. So yes, general sir. examination is fine, right? Yes, sir. Okay, go to local examination. Sir, this is the uh, photograph. This is the ulcerative proliferative uh, growth, which is present over the left side of the buccal mucosa. If this was not ulcerative, 
if it was submucous tumor what would come into your mind the type okay. of the lesion is very important ulcerative or not yes, fungating sir. growth infiltrative growth ulcerated with a cauliflower growth or submucous growth so if it is submucous what would come into your mind uh sir if it is a uh, submucous growth sir it may be due to submucous retention cyst okay uh then uh there may be uh if a submucous there is a submucous swelling there may be cyst over cyst is over benign submucous retention cyst over all cysts are over there next uh then uh some mucus swelling can be uh, due to the malignant nature no no see malignancy is not a diagnosis you understand yes, yes, so i am asking if it is a ulcerative it is a epithelial tumor so it could be squamous carcinoma if right, it sir. if the mucosa was intact there only redness ulceration is not there but there is a sub mucus swelling and a growth mucosa is intact so what would be the cause so uh what is there in the submucous of the oral cavity what glands are there in submucous of oral cavity sir so they are uh, uh small uh, small uh, salivary gland ducts which can so minor out. salivary glands are the most common and they are usually minor salivary gland adenoid cystic carcinoma so when you have a submucous growth other than benign think of minor salivary gland tumor 50% of them are malignant here you are saved because there is a ulcer which means it's a epithelial problem okay right so proceed starting with the local regional examination on inspection the facial symmetry was intact there was no visible fullness or swelling in the neck mouth opening was adequate of more than 4.5 cm oral oral dental hygiene was poor uh, in form of halitosis and nicotine staining was present all over the uh, teeth there were leucopolytic patches uh, over the left side of the buccal mucosa uh, adjacent to the lesion there was no submucous fibrosis there was no okay. erythropoietic patches you, you told mouth opening was normal if yes. there is a restricted mouth opening what are the differential diagnosis for what could be the causes acute uh, acute acute mouth opening has fallen down chronically mouth opening is restricted so in other words what is the trismus right yes sir trismus sir. which has developed recently trismus which was there for long time so what are the causes sir uh, trismus can be defined as painful restricted mobility of mouth opening of mouth and uh, Uh, if it is acute it can be uh, due to conditions like parotitis tetanus and uh, it can be due to uh, trauma and uh, we will we will confine to this case there is a ulcer in the left right sir by far it is painless unless he puts his finger pokes and rubs he you told a painless yes. ulcer in this patient with this condition in that location suddenly mouth opening comes down and pain appears what would be the re first reason in this patient? sir uh, if sudden pain appears in this patient and we are suspecting a malignancy of the buccal mucosa and if it is in, if it has infiltrated into the mandible there may be, might be mandibular fractures okay number 1 secondary super added infection in a malignant ulcer first cause of pain which was not there right sir okay as you say loco regional extension into the periosteum of the mandible and pain painless trismus of recent onset in this ulcer in this patient what would come to your mind so uh, painless trismus uh, in this patient might be due to the uh, infiltration of the uh, medial pterygoid muscle okay good so if you rule out sms you told there is no sms in this patient recent onset of painless trismus means tumor has gone into infratemporal fossa Via RMT, retromolar trigon, and pterygoid muscles are involved. Why is it important? Is it important? This sir, a, patient develops trismus. Is it important? Sir, it is a criteria for resectability. If uh, it is involved in medial, if the medial pterygoid is involved, uh, so uh, the lesion becomes unresectable, sir. 
Then it is T it is T four B and usually non curative. Huh? Okay, very good. Go ahead. Proceed. Then uh, there were no erythroplakin patches. The protrusion of the tongue was normal. There was an uh, on, there was an ulcerative proliferative growth in the left side of the buccal mucosa, which was three to four centimeter in size, tender, bleeds on touch, uh, ill-defined irregular margins with inverted edges, and and retromolar tract. Sir, so it had an indurated base. Which is which was extending beyond the margins of the lesion. Uh, so the floor of mouth, tongue, and upper GB sulcus and upper alveolus were free from the lesion. There was. I, I just want to know. You commented there is leukoplakia. Why yeah. is concomitant leukoplakia, erythroplakia with this ulcer important? Uh, sir, couldn't understand, sir. Uh, Uh, see, you told you looked for leukoplakia and erythroplakia surrounding this primary tumor, right? Yes, sir. What is its significance? Uh, sir, uh, that the uh, apart from the lesion, sir, there may be uh, infiltration of the um, malignancy uh, towards that area also, sir. Because there will be multiple in situ synchronous primaries. Primary lesion. Okay. Yeah. So which is the place where there is multifocality and multicentricity most common in the human body? Which malignancy has got highest chance of in situ changes and uh, multicentricity and multifocality? So carcinoma breast, sir. Number one is urinary bladder tumor, in situ right. change and multiple. Number two is oral cancer. Okay. That's why it is very important. Field cancerization is four percent in oral cancer. That is the commonest cause of recurrence, in spite of adequate surgery. If you don't map it, so you apply a lugal iodine. Look where the mucosa is abnormal and excise all of them. Okay. What is the incidence of malignancy in leukoplakia? Leukoplakia is a pre-cancerous condition or pre-malignant condition. What is the difference between pre-cancerous and pre-malignant? Sir, uh, the pre-malignant condition means. that it is a risk factor means uh, the malignancy have uh, there is no uh, no atypical cells at present but it is a risk factor and uh, may convert into malignancy at a, uh, uh, in uh, coming time okay leukoplakia is pre malignant or pre cancerous sir uh, sir pre malignant sir what is the incidence of malignancy in a patient who has leukoplakia uh, sir uh, the incidence is uh, approximately sir uh, Point one percent, sir. The chance of malignancy in leukoplakia is five percent. Erythro leukoplakia is the highest, seven to ten percent. Okay, just remember this. Please okay. read the differential diagnosis for pre-malignant and pre-cancerous. With the available time, we can't go into that. There are twelve pre-malignant, pre-cancerous. Read about it. Sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Metachronous tumor also, or only synchronous tumor. Sir, metachronous can also be there, but uh, it is generally uh, synchronous. Shubankar. Yes, sir. What is the difference between a pre-malignant lesion and a pre-malignant condition? Uh, sir, the pre-malignant condition is uh, like uh, that. Uh, it acts as a risk factor. And if uh, a, if there is a lesion, if there is a lesion which is uh, which is acting as a risk factor is a pre-malignant lesion. See, a pre-malignant lesion is one which is associated with cancer, but doesn't turn into one. Whereas a lesion may turn into a cancer. Clear? Thanks. Leukoplakia is an obligatory precursor or a non-obligatory precursor. Means hundred percent it will turn into cancer or it will, there is a chance of escaping. No, sir. The hundred. The uh, it is not. Doctor Somshaker. Doctor Somshaker gave you the stats already. <laughs> so I am just uh, asking you in a simple English. Yes, sir. It is not always that it will uh, turn into malignancy, sir. What about erythroplakia? 
सर एरिथ्रोप्लेकिया हैज मोर चांसेस ऑफ टर्निंग इनटू मैलिग्नेंसी देन ल्यूकोप्लेकिया सर एट लीस्ट 17 टू 20 टाइम्स मच मोर देन ल्यूकोप्लेकिया थैंक यू कैन कैन वी रिक्वेस्ट अदर्स टू प्लीज म्यूट लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर स्पीकिंग ऑन द बैकग्राउंड ऑन फोन और टीवी कैन वी प्लीज रिक्वेस्ट पीपल अदर देन द examiners and the candidate to please mute we can hear the news actually we can hear the news <laughs> exactly so i don't know who is uh, who is this please mute yourself others if a patient has two tumor in the oral cavity how do you distinguish between field cancerization and synchronous double primary hmm the the main definition is absence of leukoplakia or erythroplakia surrounding the primary no field cancerization and 1 cm of normal strip of mucosa is double prime that criteria what the you, you mentioned is what's called warren gates criteria warren and gates criteria it's not who criteria where there should be a, a difference of 1.5 to 2 cm away and some people say it should be present more than 3 to 5 years after the primary So that that's also there in the Warren and Gates criteria, not in the WHO criteria. So these are the primary, the, the index lesion and the second primary lesion should be separated by three to five years later. Okay, that's what they say about the second primary, not the recurrence or the field cancer decision. It's called Warren and Gates criteria. That is for uh, recurrence versus synchronous second primary in the follow-up, yeah, metachronous, yeah. Okay, proceed, Shubankar. So then there were no erythroplakic patches. The protrusion was uh, of tongue was normal. There was ultra proliferative growth in the left buccal mucosa, uh, three to four centimeter in size. Tender bleeds on touch, ill-defined irregular margins with inverted edges extending from. Shubankar, first... Shubankar, your this slide is not on the screen. You say ultra proliferative lesion is tender. Yes, sir. So how did you elicit the tenderness there? uh so while examining so uh so there was uh, on touch there was tenderness sir go ahead uh, it is extending from the first molar tooth till third molar tooth reaching up to the uh, left lower uh, gb sulcus lower alveolus and retromolar trigon had a indurated base which was extending beyond the margins of the lesion the floor of mouth Tongue and upper GB sulcus and upper alveolus was free of the lesion. What do you mean by RMT, retromolar trigon? What is its significance in oral cancer? Sir, uh, the retromolar trigon is the area behind the third molar uh, tooth and uh, which is present over the ascending part of the mandible, sir. It's triangular area and what is its significance? Sir, uh, if it is involved, sir, uh, if Retromolar trigon is involved. There are uh, higher chances of uh, mandibular involvement, and uh, that uh, mandibulectomy may be required if it is involved. And it it is directly the mucosae overlying the cauda tympani uh, narrow there underlying the bone, and chance of marginal mandibulectomy is very low. And it is a watershed area for an entry into infra temporal fossa and skull base. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. You can okay. easily go into the tibial mandibular space or infra temporal space. You can go easily. Then there was loosening of the uh, left plus plus. Sir, uh, it requires a uh, block dissection for sure. Even if it's an N zero neck, okay. Since it's yes. an aggressive tumor, even if your neck is N zero on investigation or you know after all investigation over, even then in a retromolar trigon you will do compulsorily you will do uh, dissection of the lymph node, okay. Right, Because of all the other reasons that they told, it's aggressive. Right, sir. Thank you. then uh, there was loosening of the left uh, lower third molar tooth and absent second molar tooth which has a history of spontaneous loss on bi digital examination the growth was mobile over the skin there was a increased mandibular thickness over the affected side when compared to the contralateral side 
there was no crepitus or irregularity of the mandible which was felt wow. opening but of the now it is mobile so uh, if you see the ulcer the base is towards the skin of the cheek not towards the bone or gb sulcus so how, what mobility means with relation to what did you move it is did you move it with skin of the cheek what is that you have in mind when you say it is mobile uh sir uh, with what structure would come in the base shubankar can you hear us uh sir the voice is breaking sir uh, yeah what what structure comes at the base of this patient ulcer the photo you showed uh sir couldn't understand sir the base in this case would be buccinator or buccal pad of fat so when you say it is mobile you mean to say it is mobile on the buccinator fixed buccinator. to buccinator or to the skin outside so yes, it sir. cannot be moved what did you mean by that that's what i meant yes sir so uh, it is mobile over the buccinator sir so you know how to put the buccinator into contraction right is that did that did you mean like in breast clump pectoralis major put to contraction without contraction so can you put buccinator into contraction alone no sir okay proceed so uh, subhangar what are the other structure what are the other structures in the cheek or are the other layers you know there are many layers of thing buccinator is the one we can easily check what are the other other muscles or are, are the other structures in the cheek sir uh, coming other... from inside can you mention from inside mucosa is there after mucosa there are so many other layers yes sir uh, sir uh, there is mucosa then there is some mucosa then there is uh, buccal pad of fat then there is uh, uh, muscles like buccinator there are so uh, many things yeah from pharyngeal basal fascia is there buccinator muscle is there buccinator pad of fat is there sometimes if you come a little away you can get the other muscles the so mas masseter muscle will come muscles of facial expression will come up above that then comes subcutaneous muscle fat uh, fat and all then skin okay yes, there sir. are so many layers there so you should be able to distinguish what will air from which the base is situated okay based on that the management will change okay the thickness of the lesion will change the management will change so the ulcer okay. had no indurations so i said sir there was induration sir so when you say freely mobile on the skin and how will be the make an induration sir uh, the induration was present perilesionally uh, not on the base Induration is not on the base, only on the yes, base. Yes, sir. Sir, it is present on the base, but the whole of the lesion is mobile, sir. Uh, slightly mobile okay, over the uh, underlying cheek, sir. What is induration? Uh, sir, uh, it can be. Uh, sir, the induration uh, present, sir. It, it is present at the base of the lesion. No, it is not infiltration. It is a fibrosis. Okay, desmoplastic changes are taking place. So when it is taking place, then how do you make that ulcer is mobile? Uh, so I said. So you never mentioned about induration. Uh, so there is induration. No, I think he, I think he mentioned he he mentioned like the induration of the base is extending to the mar beyond the margins of the lesion. Yes, sir. into that yeah i don't know whether that statement is correct base is at the base base means at the bottom of the ulcer isn't it indurated base cannot extend beyond the margins the margins may be indurated that is how you should describe it okay base is at the bottom of the ulcer is what on which the ulcer is resting and induration is in the margin surrounding areas indurated I, I, that's one technical problem there okay. it's better to bring this here the by digital examination there it will be easy for you to make out the indurations right sir so one suggestion subankar is yes, sir. Uh, not to forget basics of ulcer yeah we know this is a cancer so it's easily we are lured into uh, taking the presentation towards a oral cancer but right. never forget about the basics of an ulcer sure. okay right. things like a base see you are supposed to hold the edge and the margin with the index finger and thumb and see and see that feeling in an ulcer same you have to apply in a malignant ulcer okay Like, do not forget the basics of uh, suddenly when we get a oral cancer we are happy because we will be asked a lot of other questions but basics of ulcer is also asked remember that okay thank you yes, pg should remember two things two things ulcer and swelling you should know how to present a ulcer how to present a swelling so wherever you get an ulcerated lesion the description of the lesion is ulcer that of an ulcer 
wherever you get a swelling the description is that of a swelling okay where abdominal swelling a lump or a breast lump thyroid whatever you stick to the basics so you will not miss any points okay so basic description of base or floor edge it should, should be correct at your pg level should not make any mistakes in that okay next so then on by digital examination growth of mobile uh, and uh, there was increased mandibular thickness over the affected side when compared to the contralateral side there was no crepitus felt or there was no irregularity over the mandible sir uh, opening of the submandibular and the parotid duct uh, could not be visualized examination of the 7th 9th 11th and 12th cranial nerves were normal on neck examination it was around 2 into 2 cm hard lymph node was palpated which was mobile and uh, in the left uh, shubankar i will interrupt you why did you examine the 7th 9th 11th and 12th cranial now the reason uh, reason sir these are the uh, nerves which are uh, in close relation uh, to the uh, close relation in the neck and which might be infiltrated by the uh, lesion sir now explain how a buccal uh, lesion can involve the glossopharyngeal nerve uh the buccal lesion it's in the buccal mucosa right yes sir so where does the 9th 11th and 12th cranial nerve uh, uh, emerge at least 9th 10th and 11th when do you examine them is sir, it in buccal uh, mucosa or some other uh, kind of uh, malignancy sir in the malignancy of tongue sir when when uh, sir they make uh, when there is maybe uh, involvement of floor of mouth sir or is your uh, is your lesion involving the floor of the mouth no sir okay why do you examine the seventh nerve uh see 9th 11th you examine when there are lymph nodes in the near the mastoid near the base of the skull because they emerge there okay that's why they can get involved after that do you examine in a buccal mucosa i mean this your case no is of buccal mucosa right yes sir it's not floor of the mouth it is not ca tongue it is not base of the skull am i right yes sir sometimes examining everything is also wrong it should be relevant like just like your jaundice no this also has to have relevant because Thanks. not only do we know uh, want to know whether you know to examine we also want to know what you are examining is it relevant have you understood it right, that's what uh, this your method is tested usually okay right thank you would you like to check the inferior alveolar nerve here rather than the cranial nerves yes sir because it's close to the buccal mucosa seemingly close to the the bandible is the bandible is thick and in, looks like in wall or something like that yes sir How will you look for where? What will you be get if the inferior alveolar nerve is involved? Sir, there is uh, usually loss of sensation uh, below the lower lip, sir. Yes, that's what. That will be more relevant in this case rather than saying all the ninth, twelfth. Okay, it's very not very clear. Okay, inferior alveolar nerve is one nerve which can get involved in this particular case. Okay, right. Sir, then on neck examination, there was around two to two centimeter mobile uh, lip which was palpated at the level of one B. there was no other cervical lymph node uh, palpable common carotid pulsations were felt at the normal position on the both sides contralateral oral cavity and neck examination was normal examination of ear throat nose uh, and scalp was normal there were no lesions uh, over the over these sides uh, rest of the systemic examination uh, to summarize my case 51 year old uh, tobacco chewer uh, for last 10 to 12 years with occasional alcohol intake hypertensive male of upper middle class with tender progressive 4 into 3 ulcer proliferative growth in the left buccal mucosa since 4 months with left level uh, 1b 2 into 2 cm solitary mobile lymphadenopathy with no features of distinct metastases my provisional diagnosis for the case is uh, carcinoma left buccal mucosa c t4a n1 mx Where did 4A come here? How did you say it is 4 and not T2? Sir, uh, sir, on uh, examination, um, on by detail examination, the there was uh, it looked like it is uh, it has uh, mandibular involvement 
and uh, uh, because there was an increase in the thickness of the mandible sir so clinically you thought there is a mandibular invasion yes sir so that's why you think it is t4a yes sir okay okay yes, sir. Now, how do you proceed what do you want to do sir i would like uh, i would like to do some investigations to confirm my diagnosis to support the diagnosis and uh, for basic workup if uh, the disease is resectable and to stage the disease sir okay so what uh, is so you want to confirm your diagnosis then you want to stage the disease then you want to institute appropriate management for that stage right okay yes, so how do you confirm your diagnosis sir uh, for confirming the diagnosis i will do a biopsy from the lesion and uh, what type of biopsy core biopsy incision biopsy what type of biopsy sir uh, i will do a punch biopsy from the edge of the lesion sir and uh, which will involve a normal and the uh, norm, uh, if, uh, the normal mucosa also adjacent normal so you mucosa. you you would do punch biopsy punch yes. biopsy is moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma non keratinizing what would you do next sir then uh, i would uh, i would also do a fnac from the cervical lymph node and a cct uh cct of the oral cavity and the neck sir why do you want to do fnac of the neck node sir uh, we want to confirm that uh, whether the neck node uh, is uh, obviously due to the uh, malignant nature or uh, it can be due to some other infective pathology okay, so in this case fnac is negative you are not going to remove the node if fnac is positive only then you are going to do neck dissection right is it true no sir so then why you want to do if 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 fnac is negative what is the management of the neck sir uh, if the fnac comes out to be negative uh, we may proceed first of all for supra uh, supra umoid neck dissection so for it for a t4a buccal mucosa fixed to mandible as per you going into rmt you would do a staging neck dissection is it when do you do shnd so uh, is when situation uh, indicated in a t4 buccal mucosa lesion going to rmt fixed to mandible no, so no. then if fnac is positive negative in this patient is it going to change the outcome and is fnac accurate you do ultrasound there are one node in 1b one node in 2 3 so you will start doing fna of all the nodes and you no, will do 20 fna per node and all negative so you are going to leave node so in this patient is it relevant so is fnac of the neck node going to change the management in this patient no sir so then why you want to fall into trap in this patient what is the difference between keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma and non keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma where would you get it in this patient punch biopsy would be reported as what uh sir uh sir it, in this uh, uh, it would be uh, uh, keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma so where would you get non keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma uh, what is the difference between <laughs> sir uh, sir it would be uh, present in sir hpv related uh, uh, where is keratin present in human body sir over the uh, sir uh, over the uh, skin sir so which are the squamous cell carcinoma which arise from skin squamous cell carcinoma skin epithelioma penile cancer foot cancer right so which are the mucosal squamous cell carcinoma is of agus lung bronchial oral do you get keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma in this no sir there is keratin ha huh? so that's why that shows you have seen the reports or not okay so the biopsy is moderately differentiated non keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma what next sir then i'll go for uh, cct of the oral cavity as well as of the neck uh, when uh, would you when would you do mri in oral cancer i agree with you cect contrast enhanced ct scan of oral cavity and entire neck is the in investigation of choice very good i agree when would you do mri in which conditions you would do mri in head and neck cancers and not ct scan sir so, uh, mri can be done uh, if uh, we are looking for a muscle involvement mm -hmm. so where uh, which muscle rectus femoris medial, muscle quadriceps medial, medial pterygoid involvement sir so infra temporal fossa invasion when you suspect in a trismus recent onset mri is preferable good number 1 number 2 uh, 
para nasal sinus tumors number 3 para pharyngeal tumors base tongue lesions because base tongue lesions are submucous these are the condition mri is preferred over uh, ct and post radiation suspected recurrence okay otherwise what you told is absolutely right so contrast ct scan suggest mandible erosion not present multiple nodes in level 2 and level 1 opposite side neck normal what yes. would you do now sir do you have uh, the ct of this patient do you have the ct of this patient image yes sir. photo sir. if you have the photo put that no report image if you sir. have you put it no sir no sir okay leave it okay so you understood what i told abutting yes, the sir. mandible but mandible not invaded no cortical erosion mandible totally free and normal yes sir Uh, sir, if, couple of uh, nodes on the same side, opposite side. No. So what would you do? Then what sir, will become uh, the thing now? With the mandible sir, is not there in all clinically. Sorry, sir. Then what will become the T stage now? Sir, it will uh, become sir T two, sir. So what is the when the new about the depth of invasion? What do you mean by that? Sir, uh, it has been added, sir, in the uh, new. It so how, how we are going to assess the depth of invasion? Sir. Sorry, sir. How you are going to assess the depth of the invasion? Sir, uh, it should be uh, ideally done radiologically, sir. Uh, Radiological tumor thickness do not correspond to the invasion thickness. The ulcer can have a less radiological thickness, but it will have. So it is always counted from the surface of the normal mucosa. Just yes. because it is a proliferative lesion, ulcer of proliferative lesion, that means the entire lesion is seen where the thickness of the lesion is more. so the invasion is not calculated from the total thickness so radiological is not the means to calculate it it must be from the normal surface area right uh that uh, this depth of invasion has been now included uh, as t1 t2 or t3 less than 5 mm uh, 5 to 10 mm and more than 10 mm sir good shubankar what yes. is the difference in the oral cancer staging from last ages ctnm to this ages ctnm uh sir so the depth of invasion has been involved Yes, good sir. number one that's one change sir, then uh, second sir in the eighth agcc guidelines uh, they have uh, they have uh, only included the mucosal part of the lips sir, and uh, they have uh, removed the cutaneous part of the lips sir, good, from, number 2 uh, number 3 good number 3 uh, sir they have also included the extra capsular spread sir in extra capsular extension if in? it is present it comes out uh, to be n2 c directly Good. and that would make it stage 4b directly stage 4b directly sir okay very good uh, excellent okay so all uh, this is not there yeah sir the, uh, extrinsic muscles of tongue are involved is that is included now sorry sir sorry sir extrinsic muscles the muscles of tongue previously the 4a includes the muscles involvement also now the muscle involvement is not coming extrinsic muscles or intrinsic muscle involvement is not put under the yes sir the 4a issue mm -hmm. who is the father of uh, tnm uh, classification who devised tnm first page of ajcc tnm page who is the person who coined the term TN, tnm ajcc who who is the father of tnm classification uh, sir uh, uh, dr uh, denoix sir peri denoix from gustarussi institute Paris in the year nineteen fifty six. Okay, thanks, sir. Okay. Good. So now CT scan, no bony erosion of mandible. Couple of nodes on the same side, other side normal. What would you do now, sir? Uh, as you said uh, previously, sir, if it is abutting the mucosa, sir, uh, you have the patient uh, with you. There is no ifs and buts. Patient is there. You are examined. You are presented. Yes, right sir. So in this patient now i am just giving you the investigation as you go ahead so right. now what would you do in this patient with the information we gave you sir if uh, there is no mandibular involvement i will go for a wide local excision uh, with a margin of approximately 1 to 1.5 cm so straight away in oral cancer put the knife so no swab for culture sensitivity no improving the oral hygiene no improving the nutrition uh, patient may be cancer kkc All the anaerobic infection all around the mouth, halitosis bad, and you want to cut and put a nice plastic surgery flap. So straight away knife ready, patient on table and cut. Is it? No. Sir. So first I would prepare the patient, improve the oral hygiene, send the swab for culture to know what it is. 
improves the nutrition status assess the nutrition then you will take him for surgery yeah, after surgery. necessary investigation for anesthesia right right oral cancer nutrition oral hygiene improvement is very important okay don't commit directly right so you improved all that patient is fine what is the surgery you would recommend you want to give surgery or you want to give chemo and operate or you want to give chemo radiation and then operate sir i would like uh, to go for a wide local excision along with uh, uh, neck dissection modified radical neck dissection uh, then uh, uh, then with a adjuvant uh, radiotherapy sir in this patient what does wide local excision amount to you know you can't escape so easily i'll do wide local excision and we just keep quiet in this patient with this disease with your examination what does wide local excision encompass and mean uh so just tell the patient to open more take a cautery and excise one cutter cut is it what is wide excision in this patient sir uh, uh, what would you do to mandible sir uh if it is not involving uh, the mandible sir will uh, uh sir uh, but uh, we'll do a marginal mandible acne sir you know it's a mandibular invasion present when you examine it. what are the indication what are the contra indication for marginal mandible acne so contra indications of marginal for mandible marginal so then you will know where to do where not to do i will not want indication contra indication for marginal mandible acne so uh, if there is cortical invasion we will not go for marginal mandible acne so if acne. there is a gross cortical mandibular mm-hmm. invasion contra indication number 1 number 2 uh then if uh, the age of the patient is uh, much more sir will not go for marginal mandible acne no 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 come back sir, again so much more means what sir more than uh, 60 years sir so age is a criteria for uh marginal mandible acne or the edentulous or dentulous presence of tooth or ed- what is important the presence of uh, tooth sir how does mandible get invaded directly from contiguous spread or continuous spread or through the pores of the dental pores sorry sir the primary oral cancer how does it invade the mandible continuous spread contiguous spread or through the in alveolar tooth socket pores sir through the socket pores sir so dentulous tooth present not present is important edentulous mandible contraindication if you cannot achieve 7 mm of residual mandible after removing 6 mm of cut you can't do post radiated mandible we don't do marginal it will fracture and cause osteoarthritis necrosis you understood this uh, the un- para mandibular soft tissue invasion on either side of the sulcus is contraindication you understand that okay do you know types of marginal mandibulectomy uh no sir okay no problem if you know it's fine otherwise leave it okay so what is the exposure you would take do you want to do a Uh, lip split or you think trans orally you can manage this sir uh, i would like to uh, do uh, do a lip split sir okay for adequate exposure otherwise you can't address the mandible how do you reconstruct the primary area you will leave it raw or you want to do some reconstruction there sir uh, for reconstruction if uh, if we can do uh, a primary closure we will first go for a primary closure mm-hmm. otherwise you think this patient with this lesion rmt mandibular area involvement 1 cm tri dimensional with marginal mandible you think upper gb sulcus lower gb sulcus you can tie and suture it no sir is it possible is it practically possible no sir so you will absolute so there is a reconstruction required for proper function mouth opening to this patient yes sir so what reconstruction you want to do if bone sir. is removed with bone is not removed sir if uh, if bone is uh, bone is not removed so uh, we'll uh, we'll go for uh, uh, cover- flap coverage if uh, which can be uh, which can be a local advancement flap which can be a local which local ad- there is local advancement flap available what is available the whole buccal mucosa is gone rnt is gone marginal mandible is gone only tongue is left only tongue you have to plaster there is local flap possible there for this with no, such sir. a big defect no, no so what what is if my bone is not removed what is the preferred reconstruction so uh, we can uh, we should use a pmmc flap or a, a, a dl flap sir okay if if microvascular flap facility is not available yes myocutaneous flap if microvascular is there 
radial forearm is better if mandible is removed then free fibular glass okay free fibular glass Yes, okay, sir. we'll come back to neck. What surgery you want to do to neck? You want to do MND one, two, three. Sir, uh, I would like to do sir MRND uh, type three, sir. Why type three? Hmm. Sir, uh, in, a, in a multiple node positive two point two, you say N two B node. In a N two B node MND three, you want to do? Is MND three in a squamous cell carcinoma oncologically acceptable? Where do you do MND three? Only condition where MND three is done where. So, uh, so if it is uh, uh, a single uh, solitary uh, lymph node. Okay. MND three means all the three structure. Three structure. Final accessory muscle vein preserved. That is accepted only in papillary CA thyroid neck. Okay. Right. Squamous right. cell right. node positive neck. No MND three. Okay. Right, sir. MND one you can do. Remember nothing. So squamous cell carcinoma node positive. MND three is not done. MND three is used only in thyroid malignancies. Okay. So minimum neck right, in this case is MND one or two. If you do microvascular flap, MND two. So vein and artery is there and MND one. Okay. Fine. So surgery is done. Final histopathology margin clear. Patient is fine. All stitch removed. Tube removed. Patient says I am happy. Now histopathology has come. All resection is clear. Two nodes positive in the neck, margin clear. Okay. Now, what would you do for this patient, adjuvant? Sir, I would like to go for an adjuvant radiotherapy. Only radiation or concomitant chemo radiation? Sir, uh, concomitant chemo radiation can also be given, sir. Not can be all okay. What are the indications of adjuvant radiation in oral cancer? Sir. Uh, Adjuvant radiation uh, uh, indications uh, are, sir, if there is a lymphovascular invasion, if there is T3 or T4 lesions, perineural invasion, if uh, there is... Shubankar, these questions in exam are asked to know how you approach. You know, it is like, I'll give example. What is the cause of cervical lymphadenopathy? Means don't start TB. You have to say primary, secondary. Infective, inflammatory, neoplastic. Then you don't say anything as an examiner. I know you are a good student. You approached. When I ask like this, first you say indications because of primary tumor, indications because of neck nodes. The moment you say like that, I understand. Primary tumor, T3, T4 lesion, close margin, margin positive. Okay. Poorly differentiated high grade tumors. Neck nodes. Any node with extra capsular spread or multiple nodes positivity or recurrent neck. So these are the indications. So classify it like that. Okay. Right, uh, so, uh, sir, you want to ask anything at this point? Uh, add anything, sir? Yeah, suppose the mandible, uh, you, know, you discussed about marginal mandible. Suppose the cortical mandible was involved. You, you did a CT, very close margin. And uh, there's, uh, if it's abutting or abutting the periosteum, probably you can do a marginal mandible. Suppose the cortex of the mandible was involved at that point. What will the, be then I would like to do a mandibulectomy. And it would be a type of uh, arch preserving type of a mandibulectomy I would do. What do you mean by that? What, what type of mandibulectomy is that? So, hemi mandibulectomy, arch preserving hemi mandibulectomy. Sir. Hemi mandibulectomy. Okay, you want to do hemi mandibulectomy? Uh, so, any other option? What is hemi mandibulectomy? Uh, sir, if we uh, remove uh, 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 side, uh, one side of the mandible from uh, from uh, uh, T, uh, TMJ and uh, by pre also preserving uh, if arch uh, we are preserving the arch of the mandible, sir. Hemi mandible is preserving the arch. I don't know how will you do that. Do that. Yeah. Any other type of mandible you know, the way can functional preservation oh, better. Sorry, sir. Uh, uh, what do you mean by segmental? Segmental mandible. Segmental mandible. Mental putting a bundle covering the defect. You have heard of segmental mandibulectomy? Yes, sir. Yes, you can remove a segment. You can ask preservation easier with segmental mandible. If the cortex is involved, you have to go for a full thickness of resection of the mandible. So you, I, I, I thought he heard, you said, well, you don't know the types of uh, marginal mandibulectomy. You said you don't know, isn't it? 
Yes, sir. You said that? Yes, sir. Okay, no problem. There are many types of can the, the, the horizontal type, the, the vertical type, and the oblique type. Okay. What is the reverse, reverse mandibular mandibulectomy? Have you heard of the term reverse mandibular mandibular mandibulectomy? Sorry, sir. Reverse, reverse marginal mandibulectomy. Uh, no, sir. Uh, I haven't heard of it, sir. Yeah, no problem. Usually, you do the for oral malignancy, you remove the inner cortex of the mandible, isn't it? So, very rarely for a man mandible man malignancy outside, for example, a submandibular man malignancy, you know, salivary gland man man malignancy. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not a very safe procedure because the outer outer cortex of the mandible is removed, but uh, the inner cortex is not sufficient. <laughs> No, it's a lot of noise. Please. Okay, so the outer, outer cortex of mandible is removed. But it is not a safe procedure because the inner cortex is not sufficient to retain the pressure. Okay, so you may have a uh, factor related. But there's a terminology called reverse mandible. Reverse mandible. Thank you. Okay. One more terminology you need to explain. What is pipe stem mandible? Pipe stem mandible. Uh, I think Dr. Swamashekar mentioned about the thickness, minimum thickness required for the, the marginal and mandible me to be successful because you need at least one centimeter width of the mandible. So then only do the reverse marginal mandible Sometimes some people have continuously rounded and less than one centimeter diameter mandible. It is described as pipe stem mandible. Okay, so that is again a contraindication for. Uh, you are a marginal, marginal mandible. Okay. Same like an edentulous person, they can produce an attrition of the mandible and produce a thin, thin rounded or thin mandible. The thickness of it will come down. That again is a contraindication for reverse marginal mandible. Okay. So if full thickness involvement is there, you have to go for a full thickness resection. That is called the marginal uh, segmental resection or a heavy mandible. Okay. Thank you. Good. What, what is the dose of radiotherapy that is given to cure in head and neck cancer? Curative dose of radiotherapy in head and neck cancer. Uh, it is approximately uh, 60 to uh, 66 days or approximately three to uh, six weeks, sir. So 6,200 to 7,000 centigrade. What is the curative dose that is used in rectal cancer? Uh, so not sure. Uh, 5040, 5040. Curative dose in breast, 5040. Okay. Remember, right. curative dose in testicular malignancy with retroperitoneal nodes, 2500 to 3000. It is highly radio sensitive. Liver, 3500. So, radio sensitivity in biology, you must know, you understand. And the maximum tolerable radiotherapy by carotid artery is 10,000 centigrade. That's why safely you can still give after neck dissection 6,000 without a problem. Okay. Thank very you. good. So surgery is done. Patient has recovered. Nutrition is done. Patient says, thank you very much. I'm going home now, doctor. Okay. So what is the instruction you would give the patient at the time of completion of treatment and patient goes back home? Uh, sir, uh... Uh, at the time of discharge, I uh, uh, like to uh, tell him about the uh, oral hygiene he had to take care of. Then, uh, then uh, uh, nutrition. So dental hygiene, nutrition, all done. So does he need to come back to you or no? Yes, sir. sir. Uh, for then, uh, uh, he had to come for further follow-up. Why, why does he need to come for follow-up to you? Number one, initial follow-up is no, no, no. whether patient develops Just complications no, no, no. because Just of the treatment. Day. What is the complication? Surgery phase, no, no, no. radio therapy no, no. is complication, osteoradio necrosis. No, no, no. Damage the and then recurrence. Okay. So patient comes for follow-up to you regularly. What test will you use in the patient? This patient. Uh, sir, uh, I would, uh, I would uh, do a. Sir, I would uh, do some basic basic tests. Like, uh, sir, serum vitamin B12, serum uh, D3, uh, uh, C, uh, CRP. What are the basic tests you mean? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, 
sir uh, sir some basic test uh, like uh, cbc why why you want to do cbc in oral cancer in yeah. follow up so uh, for the general condition of the patient so all patients coming to opd first have cbc outside to look how is his general condition you don't want to see how he looks how he eats skin fold and all so that is what is right so it is a gastric cancer also as it is not there no observation so yeah. iron deficiency anemia no. so it is is cbc required in a follow up patient uh, no sir so uh, answer to the point other than the look uh, good loco regional and neck examination do you recommend any test for a patient who is cured and follow up on oral cancer uh, name one blood test you would ask a patient this patient on follow up and why we will leave ct scan chest x ray i'll leave that you are examining he is doing well name one blood test for this patient you would ask in follow up and why sir thyroid function test sir very good tsh because all the patient who receive more than 5000 centigrade will become permanent hypothyroid predominantly okay very good where do you think this patient would fail on the follow up next five years other than liver bone Where would the disease fail in this patient on follow-up? Lung, liver, bone, brain. Who does that? Couldn't understand, sir. Uh, Can everybody please yes, yes. mute? A uh, lot of people are unmuted. Can I humbly request everybody to please mute other than the candidate and examiners? Can I can I please humbly request everybody to mute themselves? Professor Kanagavel, you are a host. Can you mute others? Somebody with the login name of O P P O F five. Can you please mute yourself? Mute, buddy. Okay, Shubankar, thank you very much. Huh? You did lovely. Uh, from my side, I press uh, over to my other co-examiner. Okay, suppose this patient comes back with a recurrence, Shubankar. So what do we want? Shubankar, I think he's gone. Right, boy. Total, go, na. Uh, thank you, Shubankar. As a moderator and as a teacher, I would really appreciate your presentation. And uh, as a junior resident, you presented very well. And I'm sure the senior resident in surgical oncology also would uh, love to uh, understand from this presentation and the remarks from all the teachers. You did very well. पवित्रन आर यू रेडी So we will. Faculty yes. permission. Some shaker sir, Haridas, Taylor sir, can we go to the next presentation? Yeah, please go ahead, sir. But uh, yeah, please go ahead. Ah yes. So kindly mute yourself, please. Yeah, Oppo five. Who is that? Kanagwal sir. Oppo five. F five. एक पेपर भी बाहर जनरलिंग 
So today's topic, I'm going to present a case on carcinoma of portal cavity. Uh, can I proceed? Sir? Wait, wait, my last time. Can you to mute others? Ah, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Just hold on, please. Please bear with me, faculty. Conta brush. Why a five making? Okay. 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 My guest is a 54 year old Mr. Selun Aigam, a male from uh, Kerambakam, Chennai, auto driver by occupation. He is presented with a non healing ulcer over the tongue for the past two months. And uh, history of present illness the patient was apparently normal two months back, following which he developed an ulcer over the left side of the tongue, which was incident with an onset and gradually progressed in size, initially around 1 cross 1 centimeter and now enlarged to a size of 4 into 2 centimeter. And it is associated with pain for the past 15 days. So, moving on to the pain over the ulcer, which was dull aching, intermittent, non radiating, and is present in any time of the day and is aggravated on taking spicy foods and relieved on medication, and it is in mild severity. Uh, history of difficulty in speech is present. Uh, history of excessive salivation is also seen. History of difficulty in chewing is present. And history of difficulty in protrusion of tongue is present. There is no history of halitosis, no history of difficulty in swallowing, no history of loss or loosening of teeth, no history of any ill-fitting dentures or trauma, no history of ear pain, and no history of any other swelling in the oral cavity and the neck, no history of cough, breathlessness, and no history of loss of weight and loss of uptakes. Uh, past history, the patient gives a history of some dental pressure, which is not very much aware of, and there is no details also available with the patient. Just one, uh, one second, let me ask a couple of questions from the previous slide. Ah, uh, yes, sir. What is the reason for the difficulty in speech and and uh, saliva, excess saliva? What is the reason for that? You said the relation of the tongue, isn't it? Yes, sir. This patient has a lesion in the lateral aspect of the tongue. So, excessive salivation can be the anterior part can be due to the per se irritation of the uh, uh, lung lesion, sir. Any other risk possibility? Any other what is the speech or problem with the speech? Both can be compiled. What is the reason for difficulty in speech? So it is due to the difficulty in the articulation of the tongue or the uh, ah. Okay. okay. So when okay. you get a proper speech, what is the difference? What is the relation? Sir, I couldn't hear you. Sorry, sir. What is the, what is the relation with proper this speech, this tongue's position and movement and the speech? Is there anything related with that? Sir, uh, tongue position. Um, the proper articulation of the tongue is needed for the speech of the tongue, sir. In case of uh, tongue uh, tumor, sir, it could be in one of the things. So, that articulation sir, will you get a difficult in speech, or if there should be something else? That's what I am asking. What, I, what would have happened? Is it, so the suggestion is there. When there's some problem with speech and saliva, extra salivation is there, it gives you some suggestion about the condition of the ulcer. That's what I'm asking. So when the ulcer is there, even the lateral aspect, if this fixing the tongue from movement, you know, maybe fixing the tongue posterior downwards towards the floor of the mouth. So the difficulty in the movement of the tongue, at that position you may get the difficulty in speech. Salivation okay. may be one of the reasons is that, yes, it may be due to excessive, excessive uh, irritation and production of saliva, but more commonly it is due to difficulty in swallowing, you know, the tongue movements are restricted. The swallowing, saliva, saliva, swallowing of the saliva may be affected so you can have excess salivation, brooding of saliva, and all those things. Okay. 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 So, chewing problem. All these are pointing towards a difficulty in the movement of the tongue. Movement of the Okay. Continue. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, past history, there is history of some uh, dental pressure done for the teeth on the afflicted side this one month back. No history of any similar illness in the past or no history of previous surgery and prior radiation exposure. No history of type 2 DM, hypertension, 
TB, asthma, and CAD. Uh, but moving on to personal history, this patient is a oral tobacco user in the form of hands uh, for the period of 10 years, predominantly during daytime. He used to place in the gingiva buckle circus for a period of 30 minutes, around 10 times in a day. And alcohol consumption is present for the past 15 days. No history of uh, tobacco use in the form of smoking, and no history of any high risk exposure, no history of altered sleep. And uh, family history, there is no history of any cancer or cancer related death among the family members. Uh, moving on to the summary of my uh, uh, history, a 55-year-old man from Chennai, auto driver by occupation, is present with the chief complaints of non-healing ulcer over the left side of the tongue for the past two months, which was injurious in ulcer and gradually progressed in place, associated with a mild dull aching pain, with the chronic usage of oral tobacco and alcohol for the period of around 10 years. Can I proceed, sir? Sir? Okay, what do you think at this point? What do you mean? What do you what are you, what are you dealing with? What at this point? Come say sir and uh, Arvind that's Arvinda, sir, please. Tell us, sir. Uh, hello, what, what can you hear me? Ah, yes, sir. Okay, what do you think? What is the provisional diagnosis at this point from history? Uh, what do you think he's been having? So at this point, the non-healing ulcer over the tongue on the age with the usage of chronic oral tobacco usage, I would consider a malignancy in the oral cavity, sir. Okay. Did you ask anything regarding any presence of any, any spread of this disease, any history regarding the spread of this problem, metastatic problems? Sir, metastatic problem, I, uh, I asked regarding the swelling in the oral cavity and the neck, sir. But in sir. general... Uh, head and neck cancers are a local regional disease. Per se, metastases are very much rare. So, what is the area where we can get metastases? Already in the last class, uh, case we have already, already discussed these points. So, uh, metastases to the node followed by it can be metastases to the lung, bone, and liver, sir. Okay, so, so you do think it, it is a lo local regional disease at this point, isn't it? No, no signs, symptoms about yes, lymph node metastasis or anything. Locally, only with an ulcer. Yes, huh? At this point, it's more of a local uh, pathology, sir. No lymph <coughs> has to be done further. Okay. Go to the exam. Others have anything to ask? Or otherwise, go to examination. Can I ask? Yes. Can I ask? I'm here. I'm, uh, okay. Okay. Yes. yes, sir. Uh, uh, doctor. There are, I want two questions. One is, uh, what is the cause of pain for this patient? So, why do, why is this patient having pain? Uh, sir, in this patient, pain could be due to uh, of the nerves. So the sensory nerve involvement could cause what the pain. Nerve? What nerve? Uh, in anterior tooth, it is a uh, lingual nerve, sir. Okay. And so, uh, now sir? you ask the question is. You ask for any radiation. So, where do you want to ask for radiation? Um, this patient that could be a rapid pain to the ipsilateral ear, sir, because of this uh, supply by the auricular temporal nerve. Both are the branches of the mandibular branch of uh, temporal nerve. So, there could be a rapid pain to the ear, sir. Good. Next is, uh, what is alcohol? Yes. Alcohol got to do with this particular diagnosis? Sir, alcohol per se is not a risk factor, but in uh, conjunction, meaning in, it has a synergistic action with the oral tobacco usage which makes the uh, uh, immune system to get uh, hampered so that the uh, cancer may develop. So it has a synergetic to tobacco. Okay. No, is it only synergy as or anything, any other contributory factor uh, in a chronic alcoholic? You said alcoholic for the last 15 years. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. I have an answer for that. It may cause riboflavin deficiency. <clears throat> okay, sir. Okay. That's also Thank contributes you. to the development of ulcer. Okay, sir. Did okay. you ask Thank for any pre-malignant pre condition in this patient? Because there was no mention about any pre-malignant condition. So, history. Or at least pre-malignant. That's why. Right. That's right. But any pre do you think the patient can for come forward with any pre-malignant lesions? I'm not talking pre malignant condition. Condition is different from okay, sir. lesions. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, no, sir. No, one more. You asked for uh, uh, loosening of the teeth. Yes, sir. So what was what is the reason? Sir, it may suggest involvement of the uh, uh, 
dental root socket and mandibular involvement so the gingiv in how, case of how can how can tongue growth it will be uh, alveolus or roots in case of t4a lesions if it is involving the nearby structures it may involve the alveolus so it cannot go directly there so you have to okay you may continue now yes sir alveolus is involved you will call it as a t4a lesion Uh, sir, if the alveolus is just involved, that will yes, be difficult to say it is a 4A lesion, T4A. See, when there is a two area, local regional areas involved, you will not okay. call it as just because gingival circle is involved. You don't call it as an advanced lesion. So okay. Once that the T4A, only when it is a bone involvement, you are going to say. Okay, sir. So you said alcohol and uh, smoking, how it causes the... Uh, oral cancer what is the pathogenesis of alcohol producing oral cancer sir alcohol and smoking both uh, as a synergistic effect sir. the carcinogen is present in smoking whereas an alcohol due to riboflavin deficiency and immunosuppression it may uh, alcohol produce immunosuppression and it may prone for the patient to develop tumor sir no what is the enzyme involved and what is the mechanism what it produces what is alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme which produce acetaldehyde, how it is produced free radicals, what are the four areas, how it produces, whether it is acting as a irritant, whether it acts as the solvent, is act as a promoter. So you must know uh, based each better whether how the alcohol is producing, what is the synergistic with the tobacco, how it is producing. But when you are talking about uh Panbarak or that cannot how it is producing. So individual mechanisms should be also understood when you are presenting. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Going on to the examination part, uh, the patient is made comfortable and examined in a well read room after opening concert, is conscious and oriented to time, place and person, hydration is adequate, carnosis performance score is 90, uh, vitals, temperature is afebrile, pulse rate is 80 per minute, uh, regular rhythm and good volume, BP is 120-70 uh, mm of HD, uh, left arm spine cushion and saturation is normal, there is no pararectal sinusis, clubbing and pedal edema. Uh, moving on to oral examination, mouth opening is adequate, um, there is no facial asymmetry, uh, poor oral dental hygiene with nicotine stains present, then there is an absence of the left lower third molar is seen, absence of halitosis is present. On inspection, uh, ankyloglossia was seen and single ulcer of size 3 cross 2 centimeters is noted in the left ventrolateral aspect of the anterior two thirds of the tongue. It is irregular in shape. Anterior limit is 1 cm from the tip of the tongue. Posterior limit could not be assessed on inspection. It has an ill-defined margin. Everted edges. Floor of the ulcer uh, slough present. Surrounding soft tissue note. Uh, surrounding soft tissue induration is noted. Means, uh, surrounding soft tissue edema noted over the floor of the mouth and dorsal aspect of the tongue with the impression of the adjacent teeth. No other ulcer or swelling noted in the buccal cavity, retromodal trigone, lips, lower alve and upper alveolus, and heart palate. On palpation, a single ulcer of size 3 cross 2 cm is palpated in the ventrolateral aspect of the anterior two thirds of the tongue, which is bleeds on touch, firm in consistency, mild tenderness is present. Anterior extension is still 1 cm from the tip of the tongue. Posterior extension 1 cm in front of the circumflex papillae. Inferiorly just above the floor of the mouth. Margins are ill defined. Edges are everted and indurated. Surrounding induration is present, which is seen extending to the floor of the mouth and crossing the midline of the tongue on the dorsal aspect. No uh, loose teeth present. No other lesions palpable over the leaf, uh, lip buccal mucosa, alveolus, retromolar trigone, and hot palate. No thickness or tenderness noted in the mandible. Uh, lymph node examination. A single mobile node of size uh, 1 cross 1 centimeter is palpated in the lip submandibular region. Hardened consistency, round shape, well defined margin, and not tender. No other nodes palpable in the bilateral cervical region. Uh, systemic examination. Wait, wait, uh, can, I, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Okay. What is the tongue? What about, how many muscles constitute the tongue? The tongue muscles can be of two types extrinsic and intrinsic muscles, sir. Hmm. Extrinsic muscles include palatoglossus, hyoglossus, linioglossus, tyloglossus, and pharyngeoglossus. Okay. Intrinsic muscles are longitudinal muscles, transverse muscles, and vertical group of muscles. Okay. Totally, there are 16 muscles, isn't it? On each side, each, there's a median raphe. On each side, there are 88 eight muscles. So, 16 muscles yes. constitute the muscle. Okay. Yes. So, what are the various areas in the 
oral cavity suppose you are asked to describe in, in various sections of oral cavity what are the areas of oral cavity where so the subsets of oral cavity include the uh, the oral cavity in first section from the vermilion border till the uh, uh, jun uh, till the uh, heart junction of the heart palate and soft palate superiorly and the anterior fossa palate laterally and the subcomplex palate at the inferior aspect the subsets within this oral cavity includes lips a uh, buccal mucosa upper alveolus lower alveolus floor of the mouth retromolar trigone tongue okay what is floor of the mouth it does a uh, floor of the mouth means what what is that boundary the floor of the mouth boundaries of the floor um, yeah what what are the extension what, what is the extension of floor of the mouth actually it's a actually u shaped extension oh. from the from, from the anterior uh, to the frenulum anteriorly and we just okay. had the medial aspect of the the alveolar margin to the uh, the anterior aspect of the ventral aspect of the tongue that is that area the entire it's a u shaped area on either side is connected that's okay. called the floor of the mouth okay what okay, structures on the floor of the mouth muscles muscles constitute the floor of the mouth what are the muscles on the deep part of floor of the mouth so that is very important when you talk about the infiltration of the floor of the mouth what are the muscles situated there So hyoglossus and genioglossus. Yes, hyoglossus and genioglossus are there. Any other muscle is there? Uh, Mylohyoid. Huh? Very good. These are the three main muscles there: hyoglossus, genioglossus, if the if the and the myoglossus. What is important? The myo mylohyoid muscle. Suppose the mylohyoid muscle is infiltrated. Here you say this muscle. This is in tongue mobility is restricted. What is the reason for restricted mobility? We got a clue from the your history itself. Because there is a difficulty in swallowing, as you saw three and all those things, so we, we expected this to happen. What is the reason for difficulty in movement of the tongue? Um, it could be due to the uh, muscle infiltration or the in the surrounding induration because of the tumor, sir. Yes, this infiltration into these muscles. What are you talking about? Isn't it the floor of the mouth infiltration into muscles? That's why the, the movement of the tongue is restricted. What, yes, is the, what is the importance of the one more? What is the importance of the involvement of mylo mylohyoid muscle? What will happen? What is the space in which you are worried about? So mylohyoid muscle is infiltrated. What is the next space to, to which this in, in the malignancy can spread to? Uh, what is deep to the matter? My what is related to the mylohyoid muscle? Next could be submandibular. Uh, yes, very good. The submandibular sub space, isn't it? Is the, So yes. if it's infiltrating these muscles of the genioglossus and hyoglossus, genioglossus and hyoglossus muscle, there'll be fixity at the floor of the mouth. And if the mylohyoid muscle is infiltrated deep to that, in this submandibular space, can the malignancy can spread to the directly can spread to the submandibular space. Submandibular space. Yeah. See, one more important thing is what are the causes for ankyloglossia in a oral cancer? So you saw this lesion. If you see yes. this lesion, this lesion is predominantly submucous. Volume yes. of submucous component is more than the epithelial involvement. Yes. So yes. one cause for ankyloglossia is extrinsic muscle of the tongue involvement. Yes. Second cause of ankyloglossia is what? His muscle involvement alone, uh, ankyloglossia. What is the other cause for ankyloglossia? Ipsilateral, ipsilateral hypoglossal nerve invasion because hypoglossal nerve runs along with the duct in the floor okay. mouth and when there is a submucous tumor there is a perineural infiltration and totally you no know, not just the deviation also okay. hypoglossia happens and these are the lesion where perineural spread and loco regional recurrence is very very high okay okay what sir. is the nerve supply to extrinsic muscles of the tongue nerve supply to intrinsic muscle of the tongue they are supplied by the hypoglossal nerves all the nerves of tongue are supplied by hypoglossal except one which one see all the palatal muscles are supplied by one nerve except one all the tongue muscles are supplied by one except one which are those why why do the tongue develops from which arch or pouch or what does it develop from in head and neck embryologically we have arches Yes, sir. we have ended. So, tongue develops from what? Anterior two third of the tongue, posterior two third of the tongue. What? That that is very important in oncological cases. Why? So, tongue develops. Anterior two third is which nerve? Sensory lingual nerve, sir. Hmm. Gustatory. Or 
उन that's why facial nerve goes off and that has a very importance in the nerve involvement and recurrence pattern okay so that is one of the cause of ankyloglossia okay so okay. proceed moving on to systemic examination cardiovascular system uh, so s1 s2 here no added sounds and uh, respiratory system bilateral air entry equal and normal vascular bed sounds here okay go to local examination local sir yes sir shall i start with inspection sir Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Ankyloglossia is present, and single ulcer of size three cross two centimeters is noted in the left ventral lateral aspect of the anterior two thirds of the tongue. Irregular shape. Anterior limit one centimeter from the tip of the tongue, and posterior limit could not be assessed on inspection. Yes, I think it's done. Yes, present at all. Yes, already finished that. Yes, 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 done. Will that. Done then. So if you have finished uh, all the examination, neck examination. So neck examination, a uh, single mobile node of size one cross one centimeter is palpated in the left submandibular region, sir, which is hard in consistency, round shape, well defined margin, and non-tender, sir. No other palpable nodes in the scene in the bilateral cervical region. Okay, good. See, can you go back to that photo, clinical photo you showed? Yes, sir. Can you see that there is a bulge in the floor mouth on the left side and central more than the tongue lesion? Tongue is lifted up. Yes, right? sir. Why is it so? Why there is a bulge in the floor mouth and tongue is lifted up? What do you, What do you think is the cause for that? This is a tongue malignancy, not a floor mouth. There is no extrinsic tumor outside which is lifting it up. But in this case, there is a peculiar finding. Tongue is lifted up. This is not the normal way, and there is a big bulge in the floor mouth. What do you think is the cause for? That? So that could be due to the surrounding. Uh... Uh, desmoplastic reaction mean induration which is happening around the tumor sir mm -hmm. or or it could be a submucous extensive vascular you, pal you, pal you palpated this lesion right yes sir so when you did a palpation this bulge in the floor mouth is felt firm hard soft spongy firm sir it is felt in uh, firm to hard sir it is more firm so it is not spongy no sir or not Okay. The main reason in the lesion which lifts up is the growth goes and occludes the submandibular and sublingual salivary gland ducts, and there is a secondary enlargement and pushes up. Ah, remember that. That's extremely important. What is the submandibular salivary gland ducts called? Sir, what is the name of the submandibular salivary gland duct? A uh, Wharton's duct, sir. And parotid? It's a uh, Stenson's duct. And sublingual? Sublingual. Uh... How many parotid ducts per gland is there? Each parotid gland has how many duct? Each parotid gland has a single parotid duct. Sir. And each submandibular salivary gland has how many duct? It also has a single, a single duct for each gland. How many duct each sublingual salivary gland has? There's a big clue for you. And what is the name of that duct? If you know, you tell. Otherwise, we'll I will answer and we move to next. Don't there are seven to eleven ducts in each sublingual salivary gland. They are called as ducts of Rivanos. Okay. Okay. Yes. Good. So you are completed. What would you do now? What is your diagnosis? So my diagnosis is uh, carcinoma of the anterior two thirds of. No, the... we, one, let me let me ask one more question. So you said yes. there is one into one centimeter lymph node. You categorically said it is a lymph node in submandibular salivary submandibular region. Yes, sir. How would you differentiate? I am saying it is a submandibular salivary gland which is palpable because. There's a duct obstruction. I, if I, I contest your uh, your finding, I, I'm, I'm I'm if I have a doubt, it could be submandibular salivary gland with itself. How do you differentiate? Sir, uh, submandibular gland will be bimanually palpable, whereas submandibular lymph node. Bimanually or bi digitally? Uh, bi digitally palpable. Digital means two fingers. No, you can't put the whole hand into bimanual palpation. Only have the digital bi digital palpation. Okay. 
So yes, why sir. why is it a di- by digitally palpable submandibular salivary gland? Sir, the deeper aspect of the submandibular gland will be beneath this mylohyoid muscle, so which when it is pushed from the outside can be felt on the inner aspect of the. Yes, that's one more, one more pointing will be there. Submandibular salivary so lymph nodes could be can you sometimes you can roll over to the mandible because it is superficially can roll over to the mandible, but submandibular salivary gland you cannot roll over. Okay, so yes, the two findings which will differentiate between lymph node and a submandibular salivary. Yes, in what what triangle does this node reside in this patient this enlarged node what triangle is it digastric triangle sir so can you please classify the triangles of the neck the triangles of the neck can be anterior and posterior groups of triangles sir hmm. which is uh, divided uh, which is separated by the sternocleidomastoid in the uh, anterior group it includes uh, Submental triangle, digastric, carotid, and muscular triangle. In the posterior, uh, we have. Uh, What is the other name for digastric triangle? Submandibular triangle. Submandibular triangle. Okay. okay. Uh, so then, in the posterior, uh, we have. Uh, and the posterior triangle of the neck. So posterior, posterior triangle is divided by omohyoid into so omohyoid into superior and inferior. inferior so the lower triangle is called omoclavicular triangle okay, okay. okay. omoclavicular triangle where does level 6 node reside and which or which common primary goes for metastatic spread to that so the level 6 of group of nodes reside between the uh, uh, tricuspid cartilage and the so inferior border of the hyoid to the superior sternal nodes the thyroid tumors predominantly spread to the level 6 nodes sir. also hyperpharynx and hyperpharyngeal lesions can go to central compartment where is uh, where is level 7 node situated level 7 nodes from the suprasternal nodes to the innominate arteries their superior mediastinal nodes which superior are involved mediastinal. yeah which are usually involved in thymic malignancies or thyroid malignancies thyroid malignancies okay what is what is difference between level 4 node and supraclavicular sclen node is sclen node supraclavicular node synonymous we always say you no know, drosia sign positive supraclavicular node present sclen node present yes sir okay what do you by definition what do you mean by supraclavicular node or sclen node so, uh, is it sclen uh, node means uh, it is uh, more near the junction of this igv and the thoracic duct sir which is predominantly enlarged in the ga malignancies Whereas the level four of group of nodes would be enlarged from the cricoid cartilage till the uh, uh, sternoclavicular. When, when when we say supraclavicular node, okay, so uh, as per the AJCC eighth edition manual, supraclavicular nodes means what? Okay, level four B and okay. level five B nodes which reside in the triangle of HO. HO. Read the eighth okay. AJCC. It says what is triangle of HO. you go back and read these are the supraclavicular nodes okay okay sir do you know who defined the neck triangles of the neck and okay. who no, who defined the levels of the neck level 1 level 2a 2b 3a 3b 4a 4b 5a 5b do you know who sir, defined the levels that? of the neck is memorial sloan catering classification uh, there is a person memorial sloan catering is a organization organization cannot manufacture it right there has yes. to be a person so who is the person father of levels who is the person who defined mnd1 mnd2 mnd3 correct who is madina madina is the one who defined the okay yes, level 1 level 2 let's read about it okay so yes. what would you do in this patient so what is the tnm staging of your patient go to next slide uh, yes the carcinoma of the anterior two thirds of the ventral aspect with a single hard node in the level 1b So I would stage it as T two N one and uh, meta M X. This patient has ankyloglossia. Yes, sir. So there is ankyloglossia, fixed tongue, floor mouth invaded. You submucous invasion of the full thickness of extrinsic muscle going to floor mouth. You think it is T two lesion? What is P four lesions in oral cancer? P four lesions could be uh, involvement of the maxillary sinus. Mm-hmm. Uh, cortical invasion of the bone inferior alveolar nerve involvement mm. uh, skin involvement and the floor of the mouth muscular involvement yeah 
So this patient, you say you showed a lesion, ankyloglossia, floor moth involved. So you think it is T two N one. So T two N one is what stage? So T two N one will be stage three. So you think this is a stage three T two disease? So it could be T four A. Could be. It, it, it is T four A, sir. Sorry, it is T four. So beautiful examination, fantastically you examined. We are very impressed with your examination finding. It is like telling PDR and their skin ulcerated. Fix to this. What is it? T two N zero M one. Okay, so you have a T four A. Is it T four B or T four A? It's T four A, sir. So what stage it would make? Uh, it would make stage four A. Okay. So what would you do now? So stage. What is the intention of treatment now? Ankyloglossia, floor moth involved, T four N one M X, stage four A. Intention of treatment is palliative cure. What is the intention? Curative intention of treatment, sir. Very good. So, what would you do now? Uh, curative intention of treatment. So, after uh, doing my basic investigations and uh, confirming the malignancy with the HVH biopsy, uh, what biopsy would you do in this patient? This patient, I would do HVH biopsy of the ulcer, sir. No, no. Incision biopsy, punch biopsy. It's a, uh, it's a punch biopsy. Sir. Can you go back to the photo, clinical photo? Yes, sir. Tell me, where would you take a punch biopsy? At the margin of the ulcer and the uh, surrounding soft tissue. Okay. Which margin? For more over the anterior aspect, sir, because post cannot. Why? Why anterior margin? Posterior, if it is anterior margin, it is safer to take, sir, rather than going into posterior margin and searching for a lesion. Remember, no, when you when you by and large have a intact tumor, more submucous component, small ulcer. Many times you may sometimes not get a good punch biopsy. Then this is some of the cases where core submucous biopsy is recommended. Remember, based on lesions, submucous growth, a negative punch biopsy doesn't preclude. That is when you know you normally would do a submucous deep biopsy. Okay, remember this. Okay, biopsy done. Poorly one, differentiated one, 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 about the biopsy. Okay. Yes. In this case, maybe it is infiltrating the floor of the mouth for a lesions. Maybe. Can take a punch biopsy. Suppose it's a superficial tongue lesion, a la, a, some a tongue ulcer which is localized to the tongue, not involving the floor of the mouth at all. What is the picky? What is the what type of biopsy you should take? Or is there any any particular reason in taking that out? Any type of biopsy? Sir, we could take an edge wedge biopsy, sir. Okay, while taking biopsy, what will, what will be what precaution will you take? Uh, precautions. Also, Yeah. Suppose there are no. Will it? I'm giving you some clues because there's a shortage of time. Suppose okay. if we are dealing with a uh, N0 neck. Suppose you are. You don't know. There's no nodes palpable also. Okay, sir. Will it give you any idea about the further management and what type, what type of biopsy you should take? You should take a good thick biopsy. That's okay. what, you know what is what indicates the further management of an N0 neck is the thickness of the neck. Invasion okay. level of invasion, isn't it? Level of invasion. Yes, sir. Depth of growth. So you can take a full biopsy, good thickness biopsy, and if it can prove the level of invasion is how much is the level of invasion, which gives you idea about the neck load management in N zero neck. What? How many millimeter thickness is the advised one? More than ten mm, sir. No, 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 no. Four millimeter. More than four, four millimeter involved. Depth of invasion more than four millimeter, and if it is involving the floor of the mouth, in this case. This is a difference. How many millimeter is the depth of invasion? Two millimeter. Okay. In this yes, case, sir. for example, in this case, it's involving the floor of the mouth. Okay. Sir. The depth of invasion can be proven to be more than two millimeter. In even if there are no nodes, possibly we have to do the neck dissection in this case. Okay. That okay. Is, okay. So that the biopsy can give you an, some idea about the good thickness biopsy can give you an idea about the depth of invasion. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, biopsy is poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. Now, what would you do? How would you proceed? Okay, sir. After confirming uh, my malignancy, so I would uh, after uh, improving the nutrition status and the uh, oral hygiene of the patient. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, like to do a radical uh, a wide local excision of the tumor. So there is no imaging required. Let the floor moth get involved. Let no, the sir, carot I, let the carotid space be involved. No problem. So no, what sir, image do you like, want to do in this patient? I would like to do an MRI of the oral cavity, sir. 
So MRI images do you have by any chance? No, sir. Okay, no problem. So MRI shows floor mode, full thickness, extensic muscle involved, going down beyond the floor mode and invading the submandibular and sublingual cerebral gland. Multiple okay. nodes, you know, suspicious, malignant looking nodes at level 2, level 3 and level 5 in this case. Okay, sir. So what would you do? And then the tumor is crossing the midline of the tongue and the median raphe and involving the floor mode, touching the base tongue on the back side. Okay, this is the MRI finding in this patient. Okay, sir. So what would you do now? I would like to do a radical surgery for both the primary and the neck, sir. Uh, to take so in, this, in this patient, midline is crossing. So one centimeter tridimensional margin. So anterior total subglottal glossectomy. Floor mouth is involved. So full floor mouth and anyhow in the neck dissection, submandibular gland goes. So whole thing opens up. Cool. So you, uh, re, uh, how will you rehabil rehabilitate this patient removing almost uh, half or more than two third of the tongue? See, uh, don't use the term left hemiglossectomy. What is okay. the components of the oral tongue? What are the components of the oral tongue? Anterior oral tongue, base tongue. Base tongue constitutes 60%. What you see as a tongue when you open the mouth is only 40%. 40%. You know what is hemiglossectomy? From the tip midline raphe, entire left half of oral tongue and base tongue up to vellacula and uh, you know epiglottis. Do you do that hemiglossectomy? No, sir. So don't use the term. It is never hemiglossectomy. Never you are going okay. to base tongue up to, uh, you know, uh, vellacula and uh, lateral PE fold, pharyngoesophagic fold and uh, epiglottis. Say, okay. is to say, a partial glossectomy okay. with a tridimensional one centimeter circumferential margin based on MRI midline touching or not. In this patient, to yes. achieve that, it almost entitles removing 75% of tongue, midline involved, floor mouth involved. Do you think that patient would get rehabilitated? Do you want to, uh, uh, is there any role of uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy in this patient? Yes, sir. We can proceed with the neoadjuvant chemo. You told me surgery first. Now that I told, then you say yes, can. There can't be yes, yes no. You would do only one thing, right? You have to take a stand and if so, you have to tell why. So, how will you rehabilitate this patient if the entire tongue goes off? Uh, sir, if I may pitch in, if I may uh, just uh, add something, sir, I'm a surgical oncologist from CNC Valor. Uh, so, this is a general surgery uh, junior resident. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, for them, I would say the priority would be to be a safe surgeon. So, in this case, I would highlight to him that this is probably a T4 lesion and probably a node negative, node positive. So he has to do a proper workup towards the neck as well as the oral cavity, probably a CT or a prob uh, preferably. And he already MRI. told that. Uh, he clearly told it is an ankle yes. floor mode. And I agree with you. He told T4 lesion and he told MRI of the neck with contrast. And yeah, then I agree with you. And I agree with you. He committed that. Yeah. So he should not go ahead with, uh, you know, the surgical options. He should have a multidisciplinary tumor board. That's what I'm trying and to elicit from him. Because he has taken a call that he would want to do a surgery. Exactly. And that to hemiglossectomy. That's why exactly and, trying to elicit that uh, in this patient, will that surgery encompass all the disease? Will it be? I'm sure he doesn't know it would entail a midline mandibulotomy or some sort of mandibulotomy. Absolutely. It is not required. Any at MS level, I want him to just know that it is an advanced disease may not be amenable upfront for a surgical negative margin resection with proper rehabilitation. So I'm trying to elicit uh, next question for him. Huh? So you uh, 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 understood. So, you know, this is a very advanced disease, loco regionally advanced disease, stage 4A, okay. probably not amenable for complete excision. So okay. what are the other options other than surgery which could be offered to this patient? Uh, radiotherapy, sir. Radiotherapy or concomitant chemo. See, remember, in a oral cancer, okay, the option is to do a radical negative margin surgery with neck dissection and, re and reconstruction with adjuvant radiation. Or if you think it is non-resectable because of the disease volume, 
or the extent of surgery would leave the patient crippled functionally and you may not achieve a negative margin then concomitant chemo radiation because the only thing is unlike larynx hypopharynx and other area unfortunately neo adjuvant induction chemo is not a level 1 evidence okay then you have to say what is the institute protocol you would say this is a local regionally advanced disease i would discuss in a multidisciplinary tumor board where medical surgical radiation rehabilitation all are available i will explain all the options to the patient okay so when you have such an advanced disease then non surgical initial modality and reassessment is one of the option okay yes sir okay good so what is the sensitive chemotherapy in uh, oral cancer uh, cisplatin based chemotherapy good cisplatin and what do you mean by radio sensitizer just basics at ms level what do you mean by radio sensitizer the purpose of giving chemo with radiation is not to sterilize the system with chemo effect right it yes, is to, so a small dose of chemo with radiation potentiate the action of radiation that is called as radio sensitizer yes. the other radio sensitizer is metronidazole hyperbaric oxygen okay, okay. Yes, chemotherapy uh, this yes, one, there are various radio sensitizer that can be used hmm? yes sir okay sir uh, you want to ask lakshman sir lakshman prasad sir you want to ask hello ha hello? Yes, ah, yes sir now oh, you were talking about uh, uh, like some speaker said like uh, what is the now best treatment for this since is it possible to do a radical dissection or is only palliate you know at this stage at this stage it uh, was in more of a palliative treatment sir what what do you mean by that sir sir i couldn't hear you sir what do you mean by palliative what do you mean palliative now did you make sure about the involvement of the mandible by like clinical examination let me ask you the next question did you palpate the mandible in this case yes sir uh, there is no any thickening or irregularity felt in the mandible how did you palpate the mandible how do you know that there is no involvement or there is a thickening so the basic thing i want to make sure is yes sir you have to palpate both halves of the mandible because the the jaw is different from so you have to palpate the other half of the jaw okay. then, compared to the say this half is thickened or not just one yes. palpate one half we cannot be sure that it is thickened or not okay Okay, yes, sir. Okay. So, what is the purpose of your MRI other than what? Uh, that... You he, he already briefed about it. I think we. I don't know what is the point. Sir, the purpose of MRI in this case. You wrote there in this investigation. You wrote there. That was yes. on MRI. Sir, so MRI. Purpose? Yes, please. Uh, to uh, to find out the extent of the lesion, sir. Uh... can be more quote more definite about your answer to look for the uh, uh, resectability if it all now already he gave you he gave you a lot of clues of all of your i think i don't you didn't catch it because we said we you said after the biopsy said it went for hemicarcinoma uh, it's already he brief about it but after he said then any imaging then you said mr before you recommend mr you should know what you are looking for it mr it has to be look for the local involvement from the tumor sir like uh, crossing of the midline floor of muscle involvement or, okay then then, then posterior extent of the tumor okay and uh, even Sir, what is best for mandible? Is it CT or MRI? Sir, for mandible, for cortical erosion, CT would be better, sir. For a bone marrow involvement, MRI could be. Is that good? Good answer. Okay, that's excellent. No. Very good. See, what is when you do CT scan? What yes, is sir. the units you measure the CT scan? Ounceville units, sir. And MRI? It is so. MRI. Sorry, I missed it. Sorry. Huh? Yes, you are right. Please tell. Tesla. Yes. No. Tesla. 
Tesla and uh, X ray. Uh, what I'm all CT MR hyphen you know X ray on a mammogram. 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 Hold. A double view mammogram, mediolateral and craniocaudal gives how many radiation? What do you uh, label that mammography unit as? Mammography is a form of X ray, right? X ray, sir. So, what X ray? X ray unit is measured in what unit? It is low voltage, high amperage radiation, sir. I'm telling units. See, no, I, I don't want the MRI is magnet, sir. We need a magnet is Tesla, no problem. Okay, so, CT scan, you told Hounsfield, uh, I agree. So, X ray and mammogram, what units? So, should I tell answer or you read an answer in next question, next class? Sure. Will you answer now or should I tell the answer? I will read and come and tell next time. What are the unit of X ray and mammogram? Yeah. What are the unit of PET scan? Uh, SUV, sir. What do you mean by SUV? Okay. No problem. Read it. Huh? Okay. Read it next time. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, one last question. Uh, yes, sir. If you want to do, when managing the neck, the nose, will you do one one side or both sides neck dissection in this case? Unilateral uh, neck dissection on the both sides. Sir, I would like to do on the one side for this patient, sir. Okay, which are the situations of tongue malignancy where we have to probably make it bilateral neck, neck involvement? No oh, midline tumor involvements, bilateral neck dissections can, should be done. It, it's crossing the midline. Any other yeah. any other lesions, any other area in the tongue will have get bilateral neck involvement, no involvement. Sir, alveolar tumors of the midline. No, no, we are talking about tongue. Tongue. Okay, okay alveolar, no. Alveolar, we know, I don't think we will be involved. Okay, sir. Posterior, posterior, yeah, posterior third posterior. of the posterior third of the tongue, the velliculae, that region, hypopharynx, these regions are usually represented bilaterally. So in a tongue, if you're talking about tongue, posterior third, and the lesion which is the midline, crossing the midline definitely can have probably can have bilateral enough now. I, I think uh, Dr. Somshaker can take on that. Absolutely. Remember, okay. when you have any tumor touching midline like this, bilateral neck needs to be addressed. Remember, bilateral neck addressing could be. SOHND on either side if it is clinically radiologically N0 or okay. if it is N0 radiation to the neck, other neck. Any tumor crossing midline, touching midline, bilateral neck has to be addressed. All okay. the base tongue lesions have a crossover of lymphatics and both the sides, both neck needs to be addressed. That's why all hyperpharynx, supraglottic, infraglottic, base tongue lesions, tumor touching midline, recurrent lesion after surgery which are appearing. These are the okay. bilateral neck node involvement should be done. But base tongue lesions have 20% bilateral neck involvement. Okay. Yes. So remember yes. that. If there okay. is one value, there is one value in head and neck cancer. I will just answer you at your level. I don't expect you to know. Any condition where the chance of lymph node occult metastasis is more than 15%, you yes. have to do elective neck dissection. Elective neck dissection is SOHND for oral cancer. Lateral lymph node dissection, 2, 3, 4 for hyperpharynx, larynx. Posterolateral lateral neck dissection for scalp and ear tumor. Anterior central compartment node dissection for the thyroid malignancy. So 15% is the accepted terminology in head and neck cancer. If the incidence of occult metastasis is 15, then you must electively treat the neck. If okay. there is a clinically positive node, then elective or staging neck dissection which I enumerated is not adequate. You have to do a comprehensive neck dissection. It could be MND 1, 2. Remember, MND 3 is not synonymous with functional neck dissection. Most of the people think FND is equivalent to MND 3. No. Both are totally different neck dissection. Read about it. Okay. Read JP Shah Operative Atlas. Or read Ramon Tiwari textbook or McGregor textbook. You will know the difference between MND 3 and FND. Okay. For year level, this is more than uh, enough. You did fantastically well, very good, better than an onco student. Huh? We are proud of you. Uh, you. So even though the intention of treatment in this patient is curative, probably this patient has got more than 70% chance of recurrence in five years. We'll follow that. If this yes. patient is cured, what is the chance of patient developing metachronos? Second primary in the upper aerodigestive tract. What is the uh, percent? 80%, sir. 
Pardon? Eight zero sir, eighty percent. Oh wow, man, where did you get this eight percent? Remember, after a curative treatment in head and neck cancer, oral cancer or head and neck cancer, four percent is the chance of second primary for every year they are alive. Okay. You understand this? First year four, eight. Okay, twelve. 18 like that what is the equivalent number in breast cancer a patient who undergoes curative breast cancer treatment what is the chance of Whenever. other breast malignancy in absence of braca on braca to not genuine hereditary panel every year a patient survives what is the chance of breast cancer in the other breast these two values you must know huh? it is written in davita if you know the answer you tell otherwise i'll give the answer sorry sir i don't know sir. for breast cancer it is 2% every year they are alive Okay, sir. So two, four, eight, like that. For head and neck cancer, it is four percent. Okay, please. Yes, uh, huh? This should be enough. More than enough. Excellent. You did very well. I am very impressed. Uh, okay. I go as examiner to MCS Surgical Onco, uh, MCS Head and Neck, and DNP Surgical Onco routinely. Even our MCS students in Onco don't answer the way you answered confidently. Super. One percent. One percent. Hello. Yes, sir. One? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have heard of field cancerization? Yes, sir. Yeah, we, we discussed it in the previous case, sir. We discussed okay, okay. it. Because I was not here. Yeah, we discussed about it in the first case. Huh? Yeah, Dr. Pavitra, I think you did well, actually, Dr. Swamishya. Very good. Fantastic. Okay, nice. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Well, previous candidate also did very well. Okay, both of you did very well. Okay. Congratulations. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank thank you. Sir. I, I, I thank all our senior uh, co-examiners uh, and uh, fantastic presentation by both students. Good. And other students who are watching, don't enjoy the show. When you are on the fire of line, you will not even do half of what these two candidates did. So please give a good clap for both of them. They are brave students. Better to make mistake here and perform well in exam than directly going to exam and then have cut a sorry figure. Okay. Good. Over to you, Kanavelu, sir. Thank good you, time. sir. Thank you. I appreciate the word brave student, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> sir, his professor is there. Tangamani, sir, are you with us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. I think Tangamani sir is not with us. Yes, sir. I am here. Yes, sir. I am here. You want <laughs> to give your comment, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, we have been doing some discussions and uh, 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 case presentations in our unit. I am. I think he has uh, done justice to that, and he has caught a lot of points from our senior faculties. I think which we should uh, learn and improve. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, you, and uh, Kanna sir, are you with us, sir? I think Kanna sir is not there. No, he is there, sir. Yes. And Pavitran and uh, Shubankar, do you have any questions to the faculty? Any doubts to be clarified? No, sir. You, you can ask any doubts or any clarification. We can request the faculty to take your questions. No, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Somshekar, sir. Thank you, Lakshman, sir. Thank you, all the senior faculty here. Srinivas, sir, Jailal, sir, uh, Haridas, sir. Uh, Haridas, sir, in fact, volunteered himself. Karna Karan, sir. All the senior faculty here. Thank you very much. Jailal, sir, thank you very much. That is excellent. We look forward for next week for yet another case. Next week, you are planning for vascular case. Any student who want to present a vascular case can reach us. Faculty also humbly request you if there are any vascular cases, you can ask your PGs to present next week. Thank you very much, sir. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.